Hey everyone, so Adobe just presented some sneaks of their upcoming AI projects at Adobe Max and they are mind-blowing. So I did cover Firefly 2 yesterday. You can check out that video linked below. But this upcoming stuff, this is Adobe flexing. So put a pillow on the floor because your jaw is about to drop. Let's dive in. So kicking off with Project Primrose, which reads flexible, non-emissive textiles, which allow an entire surface to display content created with Adobe Firefly, After Effects, Illustrator, etc., which does read a bit dry until you see it in action. The presentation on Project Primrose begins innocuously enough. There is an Illustrator file with four different dress designs, but when the presenter steps from behind the podium, this is where we see something pretty insane happen. Yeah, check this out. Yeah, it's like a magic trick. More than that, you can actually change the patterns on it. Uh, she doesn't look like she's holding a controller, but it does look like there's some kind of button functionality built in to the dress itself. Uh, but that is pretty insane. And just to make things even wilder, you can apparently animate the designs as well. I mean, that is pretty wild. And with an even crazier flex, apparently it can be motion controlled too. So it will animate depending on your body's movement. And look, I know that everybody's first thought is that this is the technology that will bring us one step closer to the flaming dress in the Hunger Games. But what I'm worried about, this is one step closer to like animated Guy Fieri shirts. This is very dangerous technology. Next up is Project Fast Fill, which is Gen Fill for video, which is insane. But there's even something crazier coming up right after this. But let's check out Fast Fill in action here. So we've got some video footage of a guy walking down some stairs, uh, pausing on a frame, and then adding in tracking points via a pen tool. You then have an area where you can begin using Gen Fill. Prompting for a tie, you get four choices a la Firefly. And then locking that in via Fast Fill, you have a guy walking around with a tie on. I mean, this is pretty crazy. Not only is it motion tracking along with his body, but it's actually reacting to the light as well. There really is no reason that I would think that this wasn't part of his wardrobe on the day of the shoot. There's another impressive demo where they added a pattern on top of this cappuccino, and uh, you can see how it really tracks along, you know, moving liquid as well. Fast fill can apparently also do fast remove as well. Uh, for example, in this shot, we have some joggers back there highlighting them and apparently just generating blank will remove the joggers. It's a pretty good shot to showcase since the background is moving as well. Yeah, it's really, really pretty cool and impressive. You can see actually where it is the color of the trees are just slightly different. But I mean, in all honesty, that is something that I don't think anyone would notice if you didn't know that there was something there. So fast fill looks pretty remarkable. I think it's definitely meant for more subtle things like you're not supposed to generate in like two kaiju battling over a city skyline, but I can see this being really helpful for things like taking a boom mic out of a shot or even wardrobe continuity errors between shots. And if you thought this was impressive, wait till you see what's coming up next. So project scene change is an easy way to composite a subject in a background taken from two different video sources and two different video trajectories. So I'll admit I wasn't necessarily wowed at the start of the presentation. Uh, we had video footage of, you know, this guy walking in an office building. They then showed this drone footage and, you know, obviously we're going to match those together. They kind of had a quick example of what it would look like if you just just kind of comp those two images together. Yeah, it's not great. And then they showcase what happens with sea change. And don't get me wrong, this is pretty impressive. I mean, obviously that drone footage was flying forward. Now it's flying backwards. It's tracking with the subject. And I do think that this will look more impressive when, you know, our actor subject uh, developer is actually properly lit. So, I mean, it's pretty impressive what it's doing just basically off of what I presume is phone footage, but it's what happens here that really blows my mind. We obviously have some footage of our developer presenter walking back and forth in his office, followed by this really wonky handheld footage of a table with like a bag and a cup on it. I always love it when people are doing intentionally bad handheld stuff. It's like way over exaggerated. So you can see here that project scene change then goes through and maps out our wonky handheld footage and kind of creates a map of it. This is kind of moving into Gaussian splatting and nerf territory. So he doesn't dwell on it here too long, but you can see that he moves the camera. So I think you do have 3D control here and then compositing it together, you get this, which is pretty wild. And as he scrubs through, you'll see that the footage is stable. It's not, you know, doing the zany handheld thing anymore, but in that at this point, he walks behind the coffee cup and then back out again. That's wild. The other interesting thing too, is I guess Project Scene Change will actually put a contextual shadow 
on your subject as well. You can see that that does not appear in the original source footage. On the straight image generation side, we have Project Posable, which as the name implies, allows you to pose your AI generated characters. This one was actually kind of funny to me considering it's pretty close to a homebrew workflow that I put together. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So Posable works by taking a you know pre-rigged 3D character. Uh, and then I guess there are also a number of props that you can add in. Uh, now, what's interesting is that while you can pose your character, if you're not great with 3D, because it does get pretty tricky, uh, what you can do is actually associate the prop with your character. And then from there, it'll actually understand contextually what you want the character to do. In this case, you know, to sit down. From there, you obviously still have camera controls and you can fine tune your character's pose from that point on. And yeah, that's not bad. You can also nab poses from photographs. Um, obviously they are using Adobe Stock here, uh, but then importing that into Project Posable, uh, you can instantly have your character take that pose. Um, so loading and there you go, you got the pose. So it was kind of funny to me is that I actually already kind of did this using Adobe's Mixamo. I would uh, take a character here, screenshot it, and then bash it into promi.ai for a style transfer. And then taking that style pass and then re-rendering it as a realistic photograph. Project Posable is not out yet. And obviously there is a lot of other things that it can do that, you know, my homebrew version can't. But if you want to play around with the idea, uh, you can check out my workflow. That video is linked below. There were also a number of other projects that were showcased at Adobe Sneaks, including Project Dub Dub Dub, which as the name implies, will translate video into different languages. And Project Stardust, which kind of does all of the Photoshop things. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this one. Uh, I want to wait till we have a better look at this and really dive into it. But in the meantime, I kind of wanted to talk about the Marsha Brady of the Adobe family, which is Adobe Illustrator. So as we learned yesterday, apparently Generative Fill is in Adobe Illustrator now and will you can generate vector images. But what I didn't know is that you can turn those generated images into 3D. So here's a house that I quickly generated up in GenFill. And if you go up to Effect and 3D and Materials, you can create a 3D house. There's this whole run through that they did basically where, you know, you can uh, get create a complete 3D object, uh, then export it, bring it into After Effects, and then just start animating it. Animation in After Effects does kind of look like it's still done the old fashioned way. So there is no like GenFill for After effects just quite yet. But in terms of creating assets for simple animations, yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, a lot of really, really cool stuff on the horizon for Adobe. And I think they still have one more day of the Max presentations to go. So who knows what we're going to find out next. So let me know in the comments which of these you're looking forward to the most. And if you want to watch the full like two hour long sneaks presentation, that link is also down below. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.